day and best day ever. Best, best day, day ever. ever. Yes. So I'd like you to just join me in consciousness in an opening prayer. So just get comfortable and maybe wiggle in your seat a little bit. Take a deep oh, yeah. breath. And if you have any worries, just leave them outside the front door. <laughs> Just be comfortable. Just be comfortable. And breathe. And keep on breathing. And just know with me that there is only one. There's only one right here in this room. One spirit, one life, God's life, right here, right now. This spirit is omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent. That means all powerful and everywhere present and all knowing. It's right here in us around us and through us as us so i know and i just know for each of us that we are one with it never been any separation never will be we are one with god so i declare for each of you the i am i am healed whole and healthy i am vibrant my body is filled with energy Ah, I am healed, I am happy, emotionally, spiritually, physically. And I turn to the area of prosperity. I am prosperous because my source is unlimited. I am unlimited. I have money to share and money to spare. And I turn to my creativity. You know, the universe and nature is always creating. I mean, the flowers and the beauty and I am one with it, so I am creating and creative. And everything I touch and I say and I make shows my divine presence. <coughs> and I turn now to my amazing love. I am love. God is love. Love is God. So I deserve love. I give love. I circulate love. And especially today, I give great gratitude for mother's love, mothering, mothering and encouraging and supporting all of us. This is God's love in an amazing disguise by all these beautiful people on this planet. So I release, I release my word after giving great gratitude. Thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I release and I let go. I know my word is acted upon as spoken. I know it is so, and together we say, and so, so it is. is.
every time I open up, love is what I see. It's so great to be here. It's so great to welcome you this morning. I'm Reverend Kate, and it's so wonderful to be together this morning. I'd like to thank our musician today, Jennifer Hart. So great to have her. So great to be here. And uh, Kate, I just, I was thinking on my way down of your mother who started this whole thing and she was so dear to me and I'm sure a lot of people here yeah. so um, I just uh, dedicate this service to her yeah. that's sweet thank you yes I think of her a lot too <laughs> and yes we kind of are here because of her it's true <laughs> in many ways so. <laughs> so this center Yes, it was started by my mother. This center is based on the knowledge that there is one great universal presence, which we call spirit. And I would like to invite Ruth Ann up to help with our oh, <laughs> candle lighting <coughs> ceremony that kind of sets the tone for us. And I invite you to join us in honoring the unifying nature of spiritual thought and experiences as we light these flames of faith acknowledging all people and all faiths symbolized by just six candles so first we light the candle for the Tao, honoring the universal path of harmony and equilibrium the natural way we light a candle for Hinduism, honoring the path of knowledge, action, and devotion. We light a candle for Judaism, honoring the ethical path of living by sacred law. And we light a candle for all forms of Buddhism, honoring the path of compassion. <clears throat> We light a candle for all forms of Christianity, honoring the Christ consciousness as the path of love. And we light a candle for Islam, honoring the path of submission to the will of God or spirit. <coughs> and finally, I'd like to invite you to take a moment and recognize the light within that is always shining as we honor the metaphysical path of wholeness, oneness, and mental healing through the practice of universal spiritual principles. Thank you, Ruthann. <coughs> So our statement of truth is that there is a power for good in the universe and you can use it. And the mission of our center now, as always, is to teach, demonstrate, and inspire a positive spiritual approach to living. So today, if it is your first time, we want to give you a special warm welcome. We want to invite you to sign the guest book in the lobby. And be sure to join us for fellowship after the service. And also, if anyone needs to update their email or phone number, um, if you haven't been receiving our Thursday email newsletter, you can also sign the guest book or talk to Jan at the book table. So right now, if you happen to have a cell phone, could you check and make sure it's on silent? Um, I just have a couple of announcements. And the first one is, of course, that 
We want everyone to feel comfortable. We want to make sure you know that while masks are not mandatory, they're very welcome. And so we also, in line with that, want to respect people's right to not hug, um, although that has always been a tradition at our church. We'll kind of put a limit on that, so ask first. Um, and the other thing is that since we've just reopened, we're trying to rebuild our volunteer <coughs> list. So there is a sign-up sheet on the table uh, in the lobby if you're interested in uh, getting to know other people, being a volunteer. And today I want to give a special thanks to Pat for these beautiful flowers. And I want to thank Verla for being our greater and greeter, not greater, greeter, <laughs> our greater greeter. <laughs> Very great greeter, thank you, Verla. And for bringing the flowers on the greeting table, special for Mother's Day. I want to thank Larry, um, practitioner Larry, who is doing our video recording today. Um, I want to thank uh, Dr. Amandra for doing the meditation. And I want to um, thank Jan, as always, for being so helpful, not, not just doing the book table, but helping with all the setup this morning. And speaking of setup, Angel has set up the room. And today he had two super helpers, um, Mario and Jose. So. Special thanks to them. So, we do like to be of service. We like to be of service to each other. We're having a Sunday service. And this month, during May, we're also trying to be of service to our community. So we do have two projects. First is a food drive for the North County Food Bank. So during May, on the rest of the Sundays, if you have some extra food, that you would like to bring in. Um, we're collecting it every week in the lobby and kind of gathering it together for delivery to the food bank. And then the second thing is that since we're small and we don't really have a social service program, we support interfaith um, services and they have the opportunity for a matching grant. So every donation that we receive for them um, is doubled during the rest of the month of May. And so um, if you would like to make a donation for Interfaith, um, you can be sure to let us know that's what it's for. You can give it to Jan. We do have a little box in the lobby where we're collecting those. Um, and then, of course, our other project is always to please help us get the word out that we're open. If you saw us on Facebook, please like us. If you saw us on YouTube, maybe you could be a subscriber. Or if you happen to have a friend, you could even mention it to them because it's great to actually be together. So, OK, last thing. When you leave, don't forget to take your car with you. The parking lot gets locked. So if you're going out to lunch, Take your car. You can park it on the street. Now I'd like to invite you to join me in a group reading. It is inside your program. Um, if you just open your program, it's on the right-hand side. God is all, both visible and invisible. One presence, one mind. One power is all. This one that is all is perfect love and perfect abundance. I am an individualized expression of God. I am ever one with this perfect life, perfect love, and perfect abundance. Great. And now if you'd like to stand for a group song. Yes. I hope that you got the um, little sheet of lyrics. And I think that a lot of you know this song. It's uh, a Donna Mitchell song. And Donna Michael, excuse me, 
and um, it's called I, a light in this world, so we are all lights. <laughs> express likeness, the image of the eternal being. Love is self-givingness through creation, the impartation of the divine through the human. Love is an essence and atmosphere which defies analysis, as does life itself. It is that which is and cannot be explained. It is common to all people, to all animal life, and evident in the response of plants to those who love them. Love reigns supreme over all. The essence of love, while elusive, 
pervades everything, fires the heart, stimulates the emotions, renews the soul, and proclaims the spirit. Only love knows love, and love knows only love. Words cannot express its depth of meaning. A universal sense alone bears witness to the God's love. Mothers would rather take the hurt than see their children hurt or have any kind of bad feelings. And I uh, have a beautiful song about that. It's called If I Could. <laughs> If I could, I'd protect you from the sadness in your eyes, give you courage in a world of compromise. Yes, I would. If I could, I would teach you all the things I never learned, and I'd help you cross the bridges that I burned. Yes, I would. If I could, I would try to shield your innocence from time. But the part of life I gave you isn't mine. I've watched you grow so I could let you. But I know that I could never cry your tears, but I would if I could, if I live in a time and place that you don't want to be. You don't have to walk along the road with me, my yesterdays won't have to be away if I knew I'd have tried to change the world I brought you to but there isn't very much that I can do but I would if I could spoke and I was just remembering that you were supposed to let spirit surprise you this week. So good, keep up the surprises. But today I'm going to be talking to you about moms, mother's love, a little history about Mother's Day, and what, what it is that makes it special that everyone, everyone can be a mother. So today, it's been a little bittersweet for me because to write this, I thought a lot about my mother. And uh, I still miss her. She died 10 years ago. And uh, what I wouldn't give just to hear her voice one more time. Yes. And just a little, she was my rock. And a little thank you to Bill Ponder's mom, Mary, who was there when I needed a shoulder. So definition of a sweater, do you know what a sweater is? Something you have to wear if your mother gets cold. 
<laughs> yeah, and what's a mother's favorite flower? Chrysanthemum. <laughs> and I have one little, one more joke from Reader's Digest. It said, when my brother, my sister, and I were young little kids, we ran around outdoors. My mom would say, if you fall down and break your legs, don't come running to me. <laughs> That's not true. That's mom. That's mom. So a couple of examples of mother's love. This I got from the Reader's Digest, but it's a story set in the Bronx, and the writer says, all seven of us kids and my single mom lived in the Bronx, and it was mid-January, and a huge snowstorm hit. The snow was so thick, the highways came to a complete stop. We lived half a block from the highway. The darkness of night was approaching. There were several cars stuck with people and their families or their pets. My mom stood up and said to my brother, I'll open my house to the stranded people. Please go and invite them to our house. We have 13 families. Our living room was covered in sleeping bags and blankets and pillows. And in the morning, we had three pots of coffee, one huge pot of hot chocolate, bacon, eggs, and French toast. Everyone showed such gratitude. Mom's act of kindness and humanity was so profound to me. She showed us all the selflessness of helping others. And one more cute one from the Des Moines Register. I was born in Des Moines, so sometimes I... <laughs> On the first day of, of first grade, if you can remember back to the first day of first grade, I stood by the front door with butterflies in my stomach, and I vo voiced my biggest concern to my mother. How will I make friends? Crouching in front of me, she said, be Switzerland. Be Switzerland. Be friends with everyone. Treat everyone equally and fairly. And then she goes on to say, for almost all of my 20 years, I have lived by these words. Soon I'll graduate and become a part of the real world. And on that first day, nervously facing new responsibilities, I know I will whisper two words to myself. Be Switzerland. So, I, I want to talk about mother's love, but I don't want you to think it's just a biological mother. They're all forms of mothers. They're angel mothers, as I call them, substitute mothers. There's grandpa mothers, grandma mothers. And I, I don't want you to feel that if you're not a, a biological mother, that you are excluded from mothering. Everyone has this love. What Linda talked about was God is love, love is God. We're all, in, we're all incarnations of spirit and we are all love. And I think the important thing is Ernest Holmes, our founder, uh, the Science of Mind textbook, talks a lot about removing blocks to loving. That's the importance is we're all love. We all have a wonderful heart and we can give love and receive love, but we, we have some blocks there that keep us from flowing. So I'll talk a little bit about that. But I wanted to mention, Robert and I have a rental house in New Mexico, and um, our renter is a grandfather. He's mothering, guiding, fostering, caring for three stepchildren. His daughter was in a serious accident several years ago, and she is in a full-time care center. And so he's doing all this and working full-time. He's a pretty special kind of guy. The Divine Feminine. What is the Divine Feminine? Well, Ernst has, says, Spirit is the Father, Mother, God. The masculine and the feminine principles both come from the One. So you and I, we all have the divine feminine. We all have the masculine. That's it. It's, it's not either or. It's both. We are both. 
But the divine feminine is often thought of as someone who is wise. Uh, and uh, the term that's usually used in the Bible and in Ernest Holmes is Sophia, which is a Greek word for wisdom. So a wise person is a divine feminine. Heart-centered, compassionate, kind, gentle, intuitive, accepting, collaborative, reflective, essential, and forgiving. Now, there are some mothers who gave birth, but they didn't want to be mothers. They were not able to be. They didn't have the tools. You know, it's like Irma Bombeck said, she said, giving birth is little more than a set of muscular contractions granting passage of a child. Then the mother is born. <laughs> and moms aren't perfect. They evolve. Like when I gave birth, I, I didn't have a clue how to be a, a good parent. And you know, I talked to my mom a lot and uh, other women and other families. Um, I just tried to open my heart and be loving. So that's our purpose, is to open our hearts and remove any blockage from our hearts. Uh, because we are both masculine and feminine. And um, Emily Cady, I don't know if you know Emily. Emily is a New Thought writer, and Emily was a student of um, Emma Curtis Hopkins. Now, Emma was a teacher to, to at, um, Ernest Holmes, so they were all kind of interrelated, but Emma, um, I mean, um, Emily was about 40 years older. She was much older than the young Ernest, but she said, God is love. We can't see love nor grasp any comprehension of what love is, except as love is clothed in a form. She's talking about all of us, we're a form. All the love in the universe is God. The love between husband and wife, between parents and children, is just the least little bit of God as pushed forth through visible form into manifestation. A mother's love so infinitely tender, so unfailing, is God's love. So a little history. I don't know if you know the history of Mother's Day. Uh, Woodrow Wilson signed it into law after the Congress approved it in 1914. However, it really dates to the time of the Civil War. There was a woman, her name was Anne Jarvis, and her daughter was Anna. But Anne started, uh, she lived in Virginia, which, you know, really was on the cost cusp, West Virginia, Virginia, you know, the Confederate and the Union. And she started just a couple of years after the war ended, she started a program to try to uh, get mothers together and heal families, bring families back together that were split up because of this. And in my own history, my own uh, great, great grandfather and his brother fought against each other. So this was important. She also worked for clean and hygienic conditions, because in, in the, the um, Civil War, more people died from just disease and uncleanliness than anything else. So she also, she worked with a woman named Julia Ward Howe, you may remember wrote The Battle Hymn of Republic, and she organized Association for the Advancement of Women. This was in 1873. So this goes way back trying to empower women and appreciating women, but also being proactive, doing something for the community. Now, what happened was Anne, the mother, died, but her daughter, Anna, took over for her and really pushed this through and all the way you know, to Congress and got it approved. And then what happened? <laughs> she was arrested because she was protesting Hallmark made Mother's Day very commercial, you know. And she protested and got arrested because she thought, you know, this Mother's Day should be much more than just a card and a flower. So, uh, and there are groups, like in, in Europe, there's a group called Mothering Day. Mothering Day, not Mother's Day, but Mothering Day. And it's about mothering uh, and working for world peace. You know, 
my mother, I didn't think she was perfect until I got older and had a child. <laughs> then I realized, you know, she, she was married at the age of 17. She had her first child at 18. Uh, she had four children that lived. Uh, she, we lived on a farm. She planted, she harvested, she cooked, she canned, she cleaned, she made our clothes. I mean, <laughs> I look at that and I go, wow. You know, so I thought she was pretty perfect. I do think she's pretty perfect, well, except for her cooking. <laughs> and, uh, uh, in the Midwest, I don't know, it's the thing about the Midwest, people just cook vegetables until they're just nothing, you know? It's like you can't even, you can't even figure out what it is. Um, the other thing that's really traditional is Jello. I don't know if you guys have, I mean, Jello is, with every meal, and sometimes it's the main course. I mean, you know, with Velveeta cheese on top, and, and, and bechamel sauce, and peas stuffed into the middle. But that's, that's a Midwest thing. That's a Midwest thing. Now, you know, the Bible says, honor your mother and your father, that your days may be long upon the earth. And so true, so true. Honoring is, honoring is giving love and keeping that circulation of love going, the law of circulation. And I know some of you had difficult childhoods. There must be one thing in your childhood that was good. One thing. Think of that instead of thinking of anything negative. And can you unconditionally love your mother now? Can you try? Try? Have you hugged your mom today? If your mom is not here, have you hugged her picture? Have you hugged a memory of her? So how do we remove these blocks? How do we get rid of these blocks? The biggest one is called forgiveness. Now, Maya, Dr. Maya Angelou was on Oprah several years ago, and she said, love is that condition in the healing spirit so profound that it allows us to forgive forgive. She says, love recognizes no barriers, it jumps hurdles, it leaps fences, it penetrates walls to arrive at its destination full of hope. So I want you to say this with me. I just, I want you to say this right now. I ask that forgiveness, I ask that forgiveness. set me and my mother free. Set me and my mother free. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. So it is. So it is. Oh, one, a police recruit was asked during his exam, her exam, what would you do if you had to arrest your own mother? <laughs> Call for backup. <laughs> it's true. I mean, this is my, my feminine is also a warrior. I don't know if you've ever seen a picture of Kali in Hinduism. Who? <laughs> But um, the divine feminine is also the rock. It's also stability. It's a mighty warrior. I mean, look at animals. Look at, I would never get between a bear and its cubs, you know, because it's a fierce mother, fierce divine mother. And um, it's, it's more complicated. We are both, you know, we're masculine and feminine, and we, have, we show different sides of ourselves because we're all one. Uh, I have a, another little quote in here. This is a, a little quote to wonder, I've wondered sometimes, is my mother ever checking in on me? Is my mother there? And this woman, this I think was from the Des Moines Register again, she says, while shopping, I noticed a credit card on the floor. I picked it up, I went to the courtesy desk and asked them to page the owner. I waited, no one came. They said that her cart was still there. She'd gone to her car to look for her, gone to her car to look for her card. When she came back, I asked if she lost something. I asked her name and established that it matched the card, which I then gave to her. She said she had prayed to her mother, who had passed away recently, to help her find the card. We talked and I introduced myself. My name is Claire, I said. She responded, my mother's name is Claire. <laughs> yeah, mom's, 
Uh, mom's, mom's there in the background. Mom's there watching. Mom's helping. If she can't be here, she's sending those other angel mothers to assist. Uh, Dalai Lama said, the future of our civilization is to make this, the future of our civilization requires an uprising by American women, and I would say men too, who practice mothering love. <clears throat> mother in a new world to find mother. Conceive of a new world. Commit to giving mothering love. Find your strength and your resilience. Find the divine feminine inside you. Take spiritual action. I'm not saying go out and take a sign and, and march down you know, Carlsbad Boulevard or something, but in your, in your heart, in your spiritual practice, find your divine, your divine feminine and take spiritual action in your mind. Stay calm, stay calm, stay centered. So I think it's important for all of us to remove any blockage we have, to forgive, to love, and ask spirit for ways to give love. So I know last week we were saying, okay, spirit surprised me this week for prosperity. But this week, I'd like you to look at Surprise Me Spirit, how can I honor my mother or someone else who was my substitute mother, my grandfather, my grandmother, whoever that was. So this week, I'd like you just to do something to honor mom. Thank you. Kid, did you ever try to figure out what kind of present was good enough for your mother? What could you give her? And you window shopped and you shopped in stores and what can you give your mother? There was a um, Broadway show called Minnie's Boys. And there's a song from it called Mama, a Rainbow.
That was so great. <laughs> um, so gather up your rainbows. It's time for us to know that there is so much good in the world and it's a time to share and understand the truth that there is only good for us, that we live in a spiritual universe, that everything we experience, substance, the physical world, our daily experiences, is a manifestation of spirit itself. Everything, each of us, Our energy is the energy of spirit in action. The light of the rainbow is the energy of spirit in action. And it is wonderful. And this center is also something wonderful. And so as we contribute to the center, know that our lives are truly enriched. What goes around comes around and there is good for us. And so it is. So it is. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I am. I am so blessed. I am so blessed, I am so grateful, I am so blessed. Now Dr. Amadra will give us a closing treatment. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Just allow our eyes to close. Understanding and knowing there's one presence, one power. That presence and power, some call God, some call spirit, some call infinite intelligence. What it is called by is not really important. What's important is to know that it is around us, within us, through us, nurturing us, keeping us safe all the time. We are one with it. There is no separation between each of us. We exist in this amazing infinite intelligence, this love that permeates everything. Right here, right now, I speak my word with authority that this day is a day of love. This day is a day that represents each and every one of our hearts, the hearts that are linked together in this love. As we move from this place out into the world, let us take this connectedness with us. Those who may not feel that connectedness, let them get it from us. As we move into our weeks, let us remember those individuals who nurtured us, who guided us, who led us when we needed it. How can we honor them? Let us bring this love to our world. Let us send it out from our hearts. Let us understand and know that we are not alone, no matter where we are, no matter what is going on with us. Let us be grateful that we were able to come here today and be with each other. And as we move from this place, place, let us take this gratitude with us. And I simply stand firmly in thanksgiving. Thanksgiving that we were able to make it here today and love with each other today. Thanksgiving that each and every one of us is a small individualized expression of the divine. I release my words, and as I release them, I know that they go out and they will not be returned back. And I simply invite you to anchor these words with me by saying, and so is so. <laughs> Let us stand for our closing song. Can you sing it a cappella? I don't know that one. Can you do the peace song? Can you do the peace song? Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay.
Yeah.